The year was 2018. I was at Microsoft's Bangalore office. It was my final interview round for an SD2 role and I faced a critical question from the principal engineer. It revolved around the best approach for network calls on Android. While async tasks were on the table, I being at the top of my game decided to take a different route. Instead of going with the conventional wisdom, I confidently suggested uh, creating an Android service. By reasoning, services are designed for background tasks and network calls fit the bill. I briefly touched on the idea of using a threat pool, but intentionally skipped over async tasks, knowing the problems they bring along. Anyway, I ended up not clearing the interview even after doing well in the coding rounds. It's a living testimony to the fact that it's very important to talk about ideas, alternatives and explore whatever options, like whatever comes to your mind at the moment, even if it's bad. You can refer to this last video I created on the other mistakes that most of the candidates make in the interview. And as a FANG interviewer, I have a lot to share. And in this video, we will go even deeper into the mind of a FANG interviewer or any tech interviewer and how their expectations change with the level that the candidate is interviewing for. Let's quickly take a look at the three primary levels for engineering interviews. Level one, fresher or internal level. Well, that's the most natural one where most of the viewers of this video are. This is a level which you join like right after graduating or during the internship. Then level two, mid-level software engineer level. Uh, SD2 level like falls into this bucket. Basically an engineer who has around like three to five years of experience. The person knows their stuff and can build things even uh, like without oversight. Level three is more of a senior level. Senior software engineer and staff software engineer positions fall in this bucket. Basically an engineer who has around eight plus years of experience and leads the technical side for a well-defined area of the product. They have got the right balance of leading the project, like having uh, done technical contributions and making a strategic impact to the team. Then we have bonus, which is like level three plus, where one cannot escape from the managerial uh, duties principal engineers for example uh, we also have distinguished engineers but these are like industry renowned persons one thing that you want to know about the distinguished engineers that these persons are not interviewed they are requested to join the company maybe that's the level that we should uh, strive to reach hopefully someday i don't know let's talk about the interview expectations from all the levels that we have discussed for level one uh, the fresher and the intern level the only thing that you will ever face is a coding interview and the only expectation is for you to solve the DSA based coding questions. This is the state as of now may change in the future. Well, one exception here is startups. They sometimes are not really interested in the DSA and they instead do tech specific interviews like JavaScript, web development, Android development and stuff like that. Let's go to level two or the mid level software engineer level. Well, the first thing is you will of course face a boring interview here even when given the same problem which is given to level one over here you are expected to write super readable code which fosters readability variables are beautifully named and you use the right abstractions you are expected to talk about alternatives and talk about broader implications well we will take a very specific example towards the later half of the video so stay tuned well of course you will face a design interview most likely you are expected to talk about the lower level design the high level design uh, optimizations here and there but you should be able to make like a functional design that's like the bare minimum that is expected out of you then there's this other round as well which you may face called as pair programming not a lot of companies do that but i personally feel that this is by far the best way to judge if a person can really succeed at the company here you are paired with the interviewer to collectively work on a problem and write code. You are expected to work as uh, like any other existing SD2 in the company would. For level three, which is senior level or the staff engineer level, uh, you can expect a coding interview, but it's rare. Well, the questions here might not be DSA based. Those could be minor design problems uh, which involve code, but the expectation from the code written is that it should be pixel perfect. 
you are a senior people will be looking up to you your code has to be close to perfect you will have a design interview most likely the expectation would be uh, for you to come up with complex yet easy to understand system design a lot of discussions around the architecture and decent stress is given to the optimizations in the design then the other thing that you will have is the behavioral uh, interview or the behavior around uh, well this becomes important with a senior role of course because uh, more often than not you will be collaborating with other teams having architectural discussions getting agreements making mutual decisions reviewing their code and a lot more things that come along with that in the interview you will be given some really tough situations and asked on how to handle those so be prepared <laughs> You might also face a peer code review round. Now, this is a very special round, which again, not a lot of companies do. The essence is that you will be reviewing a piece of code along with the interviewer. You are expected to be super critical about the code and point out mistakes along with the corrections. Pointing out obscurities that could be resolved, proposing ideas to improve the code in the future, making sure the code is thread safe, ensuring that the tests are written properly are just a few examples of what you would be doing. All right, let's take a very concrete example. Let's explore the kind of an expectation an interviewer has when the same question is asked to the people interviewing for all three levels. Okay, I'm the interviewer now. Let's say I ask you this question. How will you communicate between two classes? A very simple question that just has maybe what seven words. Okay, for level one, I would expect you to maybe just say a function call. I may ask more questions as to how would you get the instance of the other class to which you might say it is composed inside the other class or maybe it's injected by the constructor. Okay, for level two, I would expect you to ask the same questions to me as in where are the classes defined? Are those even in the same package? How are they instantiated? Are they instantiated in the same threads? What kind of communication is it? Is it bi-directional? Well, you see what's happening there. I would expect you to talk about synchronization, inter-thread communication techniques, or maybe like observer pattern for having one-to-end -one notifications. For level three, when the likes of a senior or a staff engineer, I would expect you to take the lead and start a discussion by asking questions like, are both of these classes even defined in Java? Where is the code even running? Are these classes part of the same code base? Or is it like one class is on the client side and the other class is on the server side? Or one class is running in process A of the client and the other class is running in some other process? Well, the discussion can eventually go to RPCs, the remote procedure calls, either over the network or across the process on the same machine. Then eventually the discussion can go to REST APIs, HTTP, PubSub, secure communication, encryption, inter-process communication techniques and whatnot. Well, you see what's happening there while the question remains the same, but the expectation is rising steeply with the rising level of the job, which the interview is for. With every new level, you are expected to talk about the broader implications of the problem itself before even like discussing about the solution. So tailor your response to your experience level, showcasing not just your technical skills, but your ability to think holistically about the problem. The question may stay the same, but your answer should grow with your expertise. Good luck with your interviews. And I don't know why uh, you folks don't share my videos with your friends and colleagues. We'll be super happy if you do so. My name is Gaurav. You were watching 100 GP and I will see you in the next one. Bye.